So if you know me at all, you might have noticed that I never talk about my time in college. I just avoid talking about it, thinking about it. I avoid talking to people from it. I'm grossed out, regretful. And the main reason is because I was involved with Greek life. I was in Kappa Kappa Gamma and I'm embarrassed about that. It's one of the biggest regrets of my life. And I just see so many people um, on social media and younger women who I know are still getting involved with Greek life. And it just makes me worried sick because of the stuff I saw, experienced, and all of that. So at Santa Clara University, I actually made a documentary exposing sexual assault on my college campus. And I'm proud of it, but I never promote it or tell anyone about it. I don't even know if my friends have seen it because I just, it's so raw and personal and I have a terrible relationship with it, I guess. I'm just gonna share some stories and experiences and hope that people can make better decisions than I did. So I think a really big myth about Greek life is that it's only like bad or toxic at a Big Ten school. And that's not my experience. I went to Santa Clara University in California. It has 5,000 students, so it's pretty small. It's a Jesuit Catholic university. And the university doesn't even technically recognize the Greek life there, which is really irresponsible. It's just a way for them to toss any accountability and responsibility for these off-campus Greek life organizations to the side. And it kind of creates a situation where it's like the Wild West. But... I think all Greek life is bad. Like, I don't care if you're at a tiny school where it is recognized and maybe you feel like your school is really strict about it and put sanctions on people. I don't care. It's still bad and I advise you to avoid it at all costs. And I seriously want to see a world where like it's no longer cool to be in Greek life. My college only had five sororities and like maybe like seven fraternities. I don't even remember. When I initially went to college, I had no idea if I was going to rush. I think in a way I thought it seemed kind of silly, but I desperately wanted to make friends. I was enticed by the parties. I was enticed by the prospects of getting to meet guys and I hate to admit this, but I felt like guys wouldn't like me if I wasn't in a sorority. And on top of that, I felt like guys wouldn't like me if I wasn't in a cool sorority. So my whole time in college, I felt terrible about my appearance. I was constantly comparing myself to girls that were skinnier, tanner, hotter. And I felt so bad about my body, my weight, and never felt pretty. And just looking back, it's so sad because I'm, I know I'm beautiful. And the fact that I felt disgusting was really just a sign of the toxic nature of all of this. So maybe you guys kind of realize this by now, but I cannot be fake. Like <laughs> probably to the point where I'm sharing way too much personal stuff on here, but I can't pretend to be someone I'm not. So when I went through Rush, the sororities that were considered like for the hottest girls, like they tossed me aside immediately because I don't have that personality. So I ended up at a sorority that the people had 
more in common with me, but I never felt like I fit in. I never felt taken seriously by them. And it was such a toxic and judgmental atmosphere where you had to be exactly one way. And aside from how toxic that is for anyone, that's gonna lend itself to being a super racist environment. Because a lot of the people in my sorority, they looked exactly like me. In my sorority family, like we all look exactly the same. That's weird, right? And I feel like the whole idea of Rush, we're going through this process, this interview process to see if you embody what a Kappa is supposed to be. When these sororities are already predominantly white, how is anyone else gonna be exactly what we envision that a Kappa is supposed to be? And no, I don't think any of the sororities at my school were 100% white, but when the diversity is minute, sometimes I call Greek life a white supremacist cult because they don't like to let people in who are different. And so much of it is based around looks. The, the sororities police their members like crazy. And then the fraternities let their members run rampant. So when I would go to these fraternity parties, I never felt good. Like I never had a good feeling in my stomach. I always felt like kind of an outsider and there were so many occasions where I was being pressured to drink more and more and then that guy would try to hook up with me or we would have some type of sexual encounter. And remember, you can't truly and legally consent when you're intoxicated. And Looking back, I recognize so many patterns where someone I did not want to hook up with was telling me, hey, let's chug our drinks together, take this shot. And even if I said no the first time, I would always end up giving in. And I don't think it's just because I'm an alcoholic. It's also because I felt that pressure to be liked by guys to be cool, all those things. And then again, that's coercion, which is illegal. So with these fraternity parties, it'll be one fraternity and maybe it'll be a mixer where it's one fraternity and one sorority. But regardless, they will only let women attend their parties because we are there as sex objects and they want to increase their odds of hooking up with someone. And this is no secret, they're super clear about it. They want all the women for themselves. They see us as sex objects and we are pressured to do things that they want us to do. I really think part of that pressure to make us do things comes from the fact that they harshly haze each other. So what does that do? That creates the idea that what it means to be a man is someone who forces people to do things that they don't wanna do. And that there's some kind of social status that they can get out of being like this. So fraternities would have just like the most disgusting themed parties. One that stands out as beyond deplorable to me is that Sigma Chi at my school would have this annual anything but clothes fashion show and they would call it the ABC fashion show and all the sororities I believe would pay money to participate in this. And of course they said it was for charity. The premise of the anything but clothes fashion show was that you could wear anything but clothes. So people would wear like 
duct tape over their private parts or newspapers, toilet paper, just random stuff, but like basically be naked. And they would parade the women up and down a runway and the men would be doing drugs, drinking. This is just one example of a gross theme for a party, but I assure you that even if the theme wasn't so predatory, the whole nature and culture of the party was. So please, I know you're gonna think that you can get involved with Greek life, but be safer than me, or that it doesn't apply to you or your school, but I assure you it does. And sometimes you can't see these things until you're further removed from it. I know there's a lot of people right now deciding whether or not to join. And I know that so much of your self-worth depends on it. Mine surely did, but I regret it. I regret it. I regret it. I regret it so much. And these are just some of the reasons why. I might think of more stories and then I'll make another video, but I can't help but feel an urgent pressure to at least share some of these horror stories because we are in the red zone which means that 50% of college campus sexual assaults take place between now and November. And I believe a main reason for that is because this is when rush happens. This is when all that heavy hazing happens in the very beginning. And we just lose sight of each other as human beings. So please, for the love of God, don't do it.